Right, so welcome everyone. Uh, let's uh, let's get started. Um, today's session is essentially an introduction and orientation session um, on SAP NetViewer Systems Administration, also called BASIS uh, training. Um, we will spend, it's going to be only half a day, so we'll spend close to three to three and a half hours, and then we will call it a day. Um, I just want to give enough time for it to kind of be imbibed and absorbed uh, rather than having a full day session. And also it kind of serves the purpose of introducing the material and orienting you to the material at the same time. Right. Uh, the session is being recorded, so if you do feel the need, you can always go back and view the recording, and that's how all the sessions going forward um, are going to be conducted, right? So this is a good <coughs> foray into it. Everything is going to be recorded. <coughs> so um, typically, you know, we see a similar pattern, right? You know, we, we, we simulcast this, right? So we got attendees. Um, you know, throughout U.S., sometimes, you know, we have, obviously, in India as well, and then we have uh, in the rest of the countries, right? So we'll have a pretty global audience, and then we have attendees in the class here as well. Um, all the material which we cover and all the access which we provide makes it transparent as to where you are, right? You can logically attend it from anywhere you feel like. Um, I am typically in the class uh, unless I find that there's nobody expected in the class and then you know I also start doing it remotely but if even if there's one individual who wants to be in the class I'll be in the class. That just helps. Um, we'll start with the background of coach uh, with my background. Um, in today's session, we will refrain from introducing yourself, right? We'll do it in the next class, um, just because, you know, with with three, three and a half hours, it becomes difficult if everyone needs to go through their introduction, but I'll definitely introduce my background. We're going to spend some time on what SAP is, um, the course content, the syllabus is going to be discussed. Training material which we use is going to be discussed. Our training approach, methodology, uh, will be looked into as well. Um, why individuals look at SAP basis and why should you look at SAP basis would be next. We are going to spend some time on SAP GUI installation and connectivity to our SAP servers. So SAP GUI is the SAP front end. So we will ensure that um, at least we spend 15 minutes for individuals to be able to connect to it. Uh, you would be, if you have already registered, you would have received these details anyhow from a mole. If you have not registered, when you do register, you will see the details. And in the meantime, at least you will see how you would be connecting remotely into our machines. SAP technical architecture, so we just pick one topic, right? So so that you can at least understand or comprehend the detail at which the material is going to be covered. So we picked SAP technical architecture as that one topic, right? Because it's ripe for um, an introductory session. We're going to look at SAP transactions, uh, a handful of them, again, to give you some insight into the material to get your hands dirty. Frequently asked questions, we'll spend 20 odd minutes on it, and then I'll open the floor for Q&A, any questions you might have, which we can try and answer. So that's going to be the agenda for today. Right. So Coach, you know, as, as a company, you know, we provide SAP consulting services. That's our main focus. Uh, we were established in 1998. 
currently we have consultants and staff um, 90 plus, 97 to be precise. Um, 20 plus clients where we do direct consulting work um, over the years. A number of key partnerships. Um, we are an SAP services partner. We have systems integration partner with Amazon Web Services on the cloud. Uh, cloud is becoming increasingly key in today's marketplace. And, you know, we have formed a key partnership with Amazon Web Services in that space. Uh, we are IBM and HP partners as well, uh, both from a hardware and a software perspective. We got certain key affiliations, uh, helps us with bidding for government projects and state projects, both federal and state projects. We are a minority business enterprise and a small business enterprise. Um, so we have got both of those registrations. Um, our main office is here in Ramsey, New Jersey. We have a solution delivery center in Gurgaon, uh, India. Uh, that's where actually Amol sits. And then we have a regional office in Delhi, India as well. And so that's where our offices are. Um, this is just an introduction to our client list of the clients we are or have done work in the past. And as you would see, since it's SAP, typical you know, Fortune 500 kind of a listing, but spread across various industry segments, some consumer packaged goods, some service sector, some high tech, some entertainment, media and communication, some pharmaceutical companies, so different industry verticals is where we have provided our services in the past. <coughs> our business model is actually um, similar to a a typical consulting company to a certain extent, and then, you know, we have got certain unique um, capabilities or unique approach, uh, which we feel helps us succeed. Um, first and foremost, um, our vision is to provide SAP technology and software quality assurance, SQA, software quality assurance consulting and training services, right? So that's our core competency, that's our vision. Our strategy is to provide our solution offering, then we'll talk about some of those, uh, using vertical integration of our resource pool, right, for any consulting company. The resources are key. So our goal is that, you know, we hire, even if we hire relatively junior resources, as long as they have the aptitude and the intent to learn, we can train them. We can deploy them to our client projects on site or remote, continue to develop, and then obviously retain them, right, uh, going forward. So that's our goal, and in the long run, that pays out, right, is, is the higher train, deploy, develop, and retain approach. We from a consultant standpoint, obviously we have got a number of full-time resources. Has left the conference. A number of contract resources as well, um, both in India and in U.S. We have a pretty comprehensive database called CBIS, where we manage uh, both vendors. Um, as well as independent resources so that, you know, we have a good gauge of the talent in the market space as well as our vendor population. Partnerships we talked about, those are key, right? Those are the underpinning of uh, what we do. SAP, AWS, IBM, HP, and then customers, right? Large businesses and medium businesses, right? That's where... SAP's focus has been in the past on large businesses, and more recently on medium-sized businesses, right? So, and, you know, that's where we focus as well. We have got um, eight key solution offerings, uh, which 
most of our business revolves around. Architect SAP is the first one. This is SAP Technical Architecture Strategy and Design is, is our first solution offering. This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis as well uh, at our different clients. Remote SAP, this is Best Shore SAP NetViewer Systems Administration, right? So this is Basis Systems Administration, Best Shore IE. Um, bringing together the right blend of on-site consulting, onshore consulting in U.S., and offshore remote consulting from India, right? So that you have a blended model. Manage SAP, this is our SAP Solution Manager implementation and consulting services. This is where we implement SAP Solution Manager, which is a product from SAP to manage SAP systems itself. And you will hear more about this as, as we progress through the course. Turbo SAP, this is SAP's performance management to help with performance measurement, performance tuning of SAP implementations um, of SAP's technology. Very, very key because for enterprise systems where hundreds of thousands of users are being asked to access the system simultaneously, this is key. Assure SAP, this is SAP automated quality assurance testing. This is automated testing for SAP using products from HP, like HP Quality Center, HP ALM as it's called right now, Load Runner, Quick Test Professional. So using those products from HP. Secure SAP, this is SAP security design and administration. Security work in SAP space is, is dealt with in this service offering. Train SAP, this is providing SAP technical training, something similar to what we are doing today, but specialized and customized for our client needs and provided at the client location. And then consult SAP is staff augmentation services, providing onesie resources here or there to customers and clients looking for specific subject matter expertise in the SAP space. Um, my background, um, I've given my LinkedIn profile here. Um, most of you can go and, 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 and look at the details there as well, right? Um, but more importantly, um, that's the LinkedIn profile, so if you have time, you know, you can um, look at it there, right, in, in, in more detail. Um, I've tried to update uh, most of it. Uh, some of it might not be current. It just takes too much time and effort to continue to maintain it. Um, right. Oops, I'm not locked in. Right, that's right. Okay. Um, I got 20 years of IT experience, a lot of it at big five consulting, management consulting firms. Um, even though I mentioned PricewaterhouseCoopers here, where I started with subsequently Accenture, also done some work at Deloitte, KPMG, right? So other than ENY, uh, you know, most of the other big five firms I have spent some time at. Of that 20 plus years, you know, 16 years has been core SAP basis project management, team lead, administration, architecture experience working in the SAP space. Number of 12 plus, number of SAP ERP, which stands for Enterprise Resource Planning, BW, Business Warehouse, Solution Manager, APO, SCM, Enterprise Portal, Process Integration, BO, BTC Implementation. Eight of them have been full life cycle, that means beginning to end. A full life cycle implementation in SAP is 
very, very valuable, but you can only do so many in your lifetime. Because a good Fortune 500 company doing a full life cycle implementation is anywhere between three to seven years. Right, so you can only do so many of them in your career span, right? So you can actually see the ratio here, 16 and 8, right? So this is a ratio of 2 right there. Right, that at least it's taking 2 years, even if some of them were running in parallel, maybe 3 years, 4 years, right, for implementation. I'm a certified SAP basis technical consultant, and our goal would be to make sure that each of you get certified as well. And that's how the course has been set up. Um, I have an MBA uh, and a master's from Tier 1 universities in the U.S. Um, I did my I did my engineering back in India. Um, did my master's in electrical engineering from Drexel, um, 91 to 93. Um, and then did my master's uh, from NYU Stern Business School a uh, long time ago. Okay. Um, this course in itself, you know, and, and related courses at, at Coach, uh, I've been delivering them for 15 years. Um, this in itself, you know, I think you've had um, you know, close to now getting close to um, 45 to 50 courses of basis itself, and we have had 75 plus of QA, right? So, number of batches have been delivered over the years. What that does is that kind of helps you in terms of how you impart the knowledge, how you deal with um, students who want to learn the material, because knowing the material is one thing, being able to teach it is totally different, right, two different things. Okay, uh, <clears throat> with that, we're going to move over to um, what is SAP? Right. Um, a lot of you might have already spent some time on this. That's the reason you are here, right? You must have tried to focus uh, on this, or maybe you were recommended by someone, or you read through it. Um, obviously, um, SAP as an acronym is is German in origin. Uh, I have. I won't try to pronounce it, but essentially what it means in English is systems, applications, and products in data processing, right? That's what it stands for, systems, applications, and products in data processing, uh, which is the literal translation of the, uh, the SAP as German translation, right? systems application and products and data processing. It's one of the world's leading providers of enterprise application software um, to manage enterprises, large scale and now medium scale enterprises as well. Uh, it delivers products and services that help accelerate business innovation for its more than 183,000 customers. So in this case, customers means what means companies, right? It does not mean individual, right? And across 130 plus countries, right? So pretty, pretty significant. So this is for management of finance? Everything, right? Not just finance. All enterprise resources, finance happens to be one of them. Um, Sales and distribution would be another enterprise resource. Material, material management, production planning, human resource, controlling, supply chain, customer relationship, product life cycle, all of these are enterprise resources and they all have to be managed actually because they're interrelated, right? HR has got financial implication because you run a payroll, right? Um, 
sales has got financial implication because we generate revenue through it. And not just sales and finance and sales and, uh, and HR and finance. It's also sales, HR, and finance. You could have a sales mechanism where you compensate your human resources as a commission for everything they sell, right? So then you're selling through the sales and distribution module. The salesman or the sales agent is getting incentives, right? And they are maintaining the HR module and all of this. The sales and the commission has got financial ramification. It's a very, very comprehensive and complex integration. And that's one of the reasons it is the leading provider, is to kind of provide this integrated solution. It was founded in 1972 by five former IBM employees, as, as is the case with a lot of the IT hardware software companies which were formed in late 1970s, early 1980s. They kind of originated from, you know, from IBM, and then subsequently they started originating from Microsoft, Oracle, Cisco's of the world, right? That's where the talent was groomed. 80 plus percent of the Fortune 500 runs SAP, right? You cannot go to any airport in the U.S. where you don't see the sign, right? Nike runs SAP, Dunlop runs SAP, XYZ runs SAP, right? Those are all advertisements for different companies running SAP to run their core business. And SAP's product offering is structured across five different business suite products, right? And I have named all of them. <coughs> ERP, which is your flagship product, stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. SCM, which is one of the other business suite products, is for supply chain management, managing the supply chain of a company, which is meaning from the raw material all the way to the finished goods, right, the whole supply chain. Has joined the conference. Customer relationship management, how do you deal with your customer and the relationship with the customer, right? If a customer calls with an incident, with a concern, maintaining the customer master data, and any other interaction with the customer, whether it is billing the customer, receiving payments from customer, all are considered CRM. Similarly, on the flip side, it's supplier relationship management. Not the people you sell to, but the people you buy from, your suppliers. And then what you do manufacture, which is your product is product life cycle management. How are you managing the life cycle of the product, the innovation of the product, right? So how do you design the product? How do you bring it to the market? How do you sustain it there? How do you eventually retire the product and come up with the next generation? The life cycle of the product is also managed with an SAP. So those are the five key business suite products from SAP. Introduction to SAP, there are going to be a lot of TLAs, three-letter acronyms, right, throughout this course. And software companies are known for this, right, a lot of acronyms. A uh, lot of times is just to make it difficult, especially for the competition. But our goal here is to make things simple for you, right? So we're going to be explaining a lot of those. So in, in this particular slide, the goal is to kind of do a deeper dive into at least two of the five business suite products, right? So the two being, in this case, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, being the first one. Um, the ERP product from SAP is called ECC for Enterprise Core Component. ECC 6 is the latest version. 
and it includes in it what we all know as modules. You must have read the word modules in SAP a lot, right? If you Google it, right? So FI, which is for finance, is one of those modules, right? So Vishnu's question, right? That's just one of the modules of one of the products which makes up the business suite. But there's a lot more to it. CO is for controlling, SD is for sales and distribution, MM for material management, PP for production planning, HR for human resources, WM for warehouse management, PS for project system. Yes, and they also turn out that these modules are different functional areas in the product, but also different areas in which people specialize. No. In fact, we don't go in depth with any of them because the goal of this course is the underlying technology, which is the same for all of them, which is called basis, which is called systems administration. So how you administer an ERP system or an SCM system or a CRM, SRM, PLM system is the same. So our goal is um, to teach you how to be a good mechanic of a car. Goal is not to kind of make you a good mechanic for a Mercedes or for a Chevrolet, right? We are not focused on that. We are focused on that. Do you know how a fuel injection system works in an automobile. Because if that fundamental has been given, then you can specialize and say, okay, you know, I know how Mercedes uses it or how Chevrolet uses it or how Toyota uses it, right? Um, and then you can specialize in those areas, right? Now, but there are still more functionalities in the car which you could specialize in, and our goal is not to focus on those. Our goal is to focus on the fundamentals of the engine which drives all of these capabilities, right? Yes. Um, so on the supply chain side, which is a separate product, it previously used to be called APO for Advanced Planning and Optimization. Then the name was changed to be more SAP, uh, sorry, more industry standard, which was supply chain. And that also has got products in it, uh, sorry, modules in it. Demand planning is one of those modules, right? This is supply chain related, right? How do you manage your demand, demand from your customers? Supply network planning, right? The network of your suppliers. <coughs> supply network collaboration, right? This, this will kind of tell you where do I need to have a plant? Where do I need to have a warehouse? How do I ship from the warehouses, right? Do my plants need to be close to my supplier warehouses, right, so that you can optimize your supply chain, which is very key. You don't want to have too many warehouses, too many plants, yet you don't want to have only one warehouse and one plant where you cannot ship fast enough and you cannot be close to your suppliers and your transportation cost makes your products more expensive. And then you've got TPVS, which is for transportation planning and vehicle scheduling, right? That how do you plan for transportation and vehicle scheduling, right? Very key, especially for companies which rely on that significantly. If you look at FedEx and UPS, in their yearly report, right, uh, shareholder report, cost of fuel or the impact of transportation is a significant line item, right, because it impacts their bottom line. So if, if, if transportation has got a significant impact, right, it's important to focus on these areas. Um, and what's the, what's, you know, UPS goes through some process to figure out where should they open a distribution center, right, or where should they 
start distribution or collecting packages from, right? They cannot have too many of them at the same time. They cannot have too few of them. So it's all called hub and spoke, right? Airline industry is the same way, right? Where do they create a hub? How many hubs do they have? Why should they even have a hub? Why can't they fly from point to point throughout the country? Right? They don't fly from all small airports to all small airports, right, directly. They always go through a hub. Because there was a scientist, his name was Karmarkar, Indian origin, right? He is the one who came up with the algorithm. That why is it cheaper to fly the longer distance? Overall, why is it cheaper for the airline and for the customer, both? Um, CRM, SRM, PLM, those we talked about, I'm not giving you the modules there, but there are modules in those as well. Right, so this kind of gives you a flavor of the business suite application products. Um, <clears throat> there are more non-functional products out there as well, right? This is, those five are the key business suite applications, right? They are at the forefront. The SAP Foundation, or Basis Systems Administration, uh, has a new name. It's called NetWeaver Systems Administration, right? Basis used to be the old name. NetWeaver is the new name. So NetWeaver is that framework or the chassis on which everything is built, right? So using the same metaphor, it's the same chassis on which all of the cars are built, let's say, right? So if you know that, you know, you can have one chassis on which you can build most of your vehicles, number one, you're going to build them cheaper, right? Number two, you're going to have mechanically a much more sound operations, right? Uh, if you look at it... Um, you know, if you look at Yukon and Tahoe and, you know, Cadillac, they're all built on the same chassis, right? If you look at the SUVs, why? It's much cheaper. And then they can have the, the body on top of it, you know, function differently or have different features and capabilities. So SAP has used a similar approach, and it has a framework called NetWeaver. Um, and within it, it has got number of capabilities, and different SAP products use different capabilities. So you've got Web Application Server, which is the most inherent of all capabilities. It's called WAS, Web Application Server. So inherent in the NetWeaver application stack is a Web Application Server. It's got Business Intelligence. It's got XI, Exchange Infrastructure, new name being PI, Process Integration. It's got Enterprise Portal Capabilities, Master Data Management, Manufacturing Integration and Intelligence. That means this framework has got a lot of these capabilities and different products use one or more of those capabilities. But the NetWeaver engine is what we are going to focus on. Because if we do that right, if we understand that right, then we can participate in a number of different types of projects. There are some other SAP products as well. Solman, we talked about Solution Manager a little while ago. It's a product which is used to manage SAP systems. Right? It's a management product. Just because SAP systems and landscapes can become so complex that you do need something which will actually manage them. And Solution Manager is one of those. Um, there is a question remotely. Let's just quickly look at it. Um, I think I did, and you know we will talk about it more, um, about the SAP NetWeaver framework, because that's what the technical architecture session later would be all about. DPC is a relatively newer product for business planning and consolidation, um, which SAP recently, not recently, uh, maybe uh, five years ago bought. Um, and it's a key component which has been used um, by various companies for business planning and consolidation. 
Um, so it sits on top of your financials to, number one, consolidate, right? If you do an SEC reporting, consolidated reporting uh, to the street, to SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, it, um, in a lot of the companies, it comes from this product. And also planning, right, where you plan what your next year is going to look like. Plan the budgets on how much you're going to spend, what you're going to spend on, how much you're going to make, how are you going to make that money, right? All of that planning work. And that planning work is based upon historical data, right? You cannot suddenly do something totally different next year than what you've done in the previous year, right? BO and Bob J, uh, business objects, right? The number of business object products. Um, BOE, business objects enterprise, business objects data services, business objects federation engine, a whole suite. This again is a company which has to be bought, which focuses on business intelligence, BO, business objects. GRC for governance, risk and compliance is another product from SAP for managing risk, security and controls within a company, right? Especially for systems like SAP having a controls and security and compliance is very key because it's your financial system, right? That's what you're reporting to the street. That's what the board of directors are signing off on. That's what the CEO is signing off on. So how do you ensure that, you know, that there is no manipulation of numbers, right? It's very easy to manipulate numbers, right? But it's difficult if you maintain segregation of duties, right? That, you know, in a big company, if you didn't do this and you made, sh you know, you didn't make sure that the person who can create a vendor and can pay a vendor is not the same person, and who is to stop that person from creating a vendor called Ajay Dhingra Incorporated? and start paying Ajitinga, right? So um, you put segregation of duties that the person who can create a vendor is not the person who can pay a vendor, right? It's two different people. Services-oriented architecture, right? This is very commonplace nowadays. Web services, everything is based upon web services, XML payload over HTTP uh, inherently. The course content, right? The course content, essentially we're going to focus on five major PDF files, right? Um, they're going to be provided to you in a DVD. Um, which is going to look something like this. This is how your DVD is going to look like. In there, it's got SAP new material. And these last five PDF files are the ones we are going to concentrate and focus on more. Right? Um, and that's what we talk about here, is that two of them, TADM, stands for Technical Administration, 10 underscore 1 and 10 underscore 2, focus on NetWeaver, AS stands for Application Server, Implementation and Operation. Part one. And then SAP NetWeaver application server implementation and operation part two. Um, third is Oracle database administration for SAP. And so these five PDFs are going to be the foundation of what we covered in the course. Right? This is SAP material, right? So it's, it's very good material. Uh, but that's not the only thing you receive from us, right? The DVD looks um, similar to this, right? It's got all of this, uh, which we're going to talk about briefly, right? This is just one folder. It's, it's set up with a lot of information, a lot of collateral material, which will help you learn the topic 
and the material more effectively and more comprehensively. We're going to spend some time um, going through the training DVD um, as part of the training material. Uh, so I'm going to spend some time so that you know you can look at uh, what it contains. So it has a folder called Knowledge Base, which has got a number of other folders and documents in it. It's essentially an amalgamation of a lot of documentation which people have asked me at various points, right? And where I felt that rather than just simply explaining verbally, providing a document, whether it's a PDF, Word document, presentation, something which either I have read, reviewed, or even coach has created, might be good to provide. And if we do provide that, um, it will help you overall, right? So that's why we have put that in the knowledge base folder. So this has been uh, going on for years, right? So like somebody asked me, Ajay, certification. What did you use and prepare for your certification, right? Obviously, it might not be relevant now, but when I took my certification, original certification in 1997, I provided that material, right? Saying, okay, this is what I did when I prepared my study guide, right? Going through the details of it, right? As just as an example, right? So people have asked, how do people do system refreshes? I've said, okay, I'll provide you a guide on that. So, client instance landscape, CIL. How do people design client instance landscape of an SAP system? So I said, okay, you know, we have done those kind of presentations, done that for our client. How does it look like? How people design it, right? So I've kind of provided that PowerPoint presentation as well. Right? And we're going to talk more about these areas, but just kind of giving you right now how the course is structured. Right? That's the first folder in the training DVD. You've got a lot of books available there. right? You could spend $500 just getting these books. Right? Now, we're not going to cover all of these books, but we provide them to you. Some people prefer reading from a book than learning from a training material, right? A lot of these books are reference material, like this book specifically, um, uh, SAP R3 Handbook. This is the Bible, right? Now, it so happens that the instructor has not, you know, published newer editions, but this is what I learned from, right? So, Jose Hernandez, you know, has written a very good book, which for a basis admin is very critical, right? I wish he had continued to uh, update, you know, have fourth, fifth, sixth editions, but, you know, it is what it is. I think now he does have a newer edition, but it's still not current. So we provided that to you, right? So this is, uh, what? It's probably four or 500 pages, if I'm not mistaken. Right, 680 pages. Similarly, there's a book on Oracle, book on NetWeaver, Systems Administration, SAP R3 Made Easy Guide, Business Warehouse book, right? Another Business Warehouse uh, book here, and some certification questions on BW, right? So a lot of material available. Um, then we have SAP GUI installation itself, material on how to install it. Right. And this is also available to download from an FTP site. Um, we've got some more material, in-depth material on ECC, BW, SCM, Portal, SCM. We won't be going into these, but it's out there, right, just so that you remember. And some older training material, some people prefer to look at it in a different fashion, so we have just kept it there, right? Um, 
SAP new material, this is what we're going to focus on, right? Especially the last five of them. What? Well, it's continuously evolving, right? Uh, different uh, different uh, sources of that material and uh, also different way of presenting it, right? Because technology is evolving, so it's not like high school math, right, where it's just the book is changing, but the concepts are not changing, right? In technology, that's not the case. The concepts are changing and the book is changing, right? SAP installation. This is uh, on how to install SAP. Very, very important. And this is where we differentiate ourselves, where every single one of you is going to do a full-blown installation of SAP with an Oracle backend on a Linux machine, right? And in there, there is a lot of learning, right, when you do that installation. I do it in the class, and then each of you independently does it as well. Okay. Student material, right, this is for people when we do the installation to learn more about Linux, because we'll do the installation on Linux. Um, some Solution Manager guides, because the product of SAP which we install is Solution Manager. How did we build the file systems? How did we do the Linux installation? And the Linux itself is on a virtual machine partition, right? How did we install VMs, right? So all of that is provided. Number of Linux books are provided as well, right? So very, very comprehensive set of material. Okay. <clears throat> um, Live meeting recordings, we obviously, the, as the course progresses, you will have access to the recordings. You will have it for one year, right? You cannot download those recordings. You can just play them back, right? However, uh, we have given you some recordings from a previous batch, and all the recordings, right? These are very big, right? They're all four or five hour recordings each. And also we have giving you recordings of the VW course, which used to be part of this course at one point. And we have also given you recordings of his first day of the Solution Manager course as well. Right? So we have provided those details as well. Um, again, more material for people who are keen on learning. Yes, the five PDFs which we have for the certification exam, that's important, right? That's the key. Some frequently asked questions, how to connect to live meeting, right? Most of you are connected today, but how to read the live meeting recording, right? Or how to review live meeting recording, installation instructions for SAP GUI, Microsoft live meeting instructions, the training syllabus itself, this particular presentation which we are going through, some other quiz on SAP, right? So a lot of, lot of material in the training DVD. Also, you will all become part of a Yahoo group. Right. Um, as you register, you'll get an invite from the Yahoo group. All of the communication which we do in the class and even after the class happens through the Yahoo group so that everyone gets notified if there's a class cancellation, if the class has to start earlier, if there is homework, if people have issues with the homework, right? You just use the Yahoo group to provide the details. This way, you know, one can talk to each other more effectively. One can share information more effectively. Right. 
There is a custom installation guide. When we do the installation, it's obviously very, very difficult, comprehensive, and complex material. So we have a custom installation guide, which we have prepared, which forms the foundation of that installation. That guide is not in this DVD. That's given to you separately. Um, This is a custom installation guide. It will be physically given to you. I'll show it to you now. Right, this is how the installation guide looks like. Right, so very professionally built uh, on how to do the installation of SAP. You will see that it explains the architecture. Right, we do it on a PowerEdge Dell PowerEdge server. It has got multiple virtual machine partitions on it. You get assigned one partition, and that's what you do the installation on. How the file systems are set up, what are their sizes. Um, screenshots of everything are given, right? So you will see every page has a screenshot. This way you know what you're looking at, right? Screenshots make a big difference. Right? Uh, it also has at the tail end the Oracle installation, right? This is Oracle Universal Installer, OUI, right? That installation. So you will get a copy of hard copy of this. <coughs> and obviously preparing for the SAP certification exam. The exam we recommend is SAP Certified Technology Associate Systems Administration using Oracle as a database, right? So and you know this exam keeps changing, but you know what we need to focus on is the ADM 51 underscore 70 or its newer versions, right, of that certification exam, McVeaver certification exam. Unique training methodology, right? Um, <coughs> so. Unlike other places which teach, right, I'll, you know, it's not like I'll just walk in and start teaching whatever I feel like, right, just because it's not school, right. I'm coming prepared, which you must have seen today, right, so exactly what needs to be taught, how it needs to be taught, and using what kind of instruction material it needs to be taught, right. All of that has been thought through, has been prepared, has been rehearsed, and evolved over the years, right, before you see it. Also, what's unique is individual installation is what you do on your own servers, right? Each student will be doing a solution manager installation as part of the training program. You will also have access to the servers for three months after the training has been completed. We will provide you a training DVD which has got all the training material as soon as you register. The training DVD has a large quantity of material even beyond what's actually covered in the class in the 64 hours, right? So which portions of it you have seen. You got 24 by 7 global access to our servers. So all the training related questions can be answered promptly, right? Because we use the Yahoo group. We have one of our systems admin in India and myself, right? We are continuously monitoring that Yahoo group and responding to it, right? Any questions which are posted on it. So you will keep in touch with the instructors as well as other members in the batch through the Yahoo group, and you will not have to wait for answers to a question till the next week, right? So we. We have thought through some of those things, right? So this is unique about our training course. In addition, session recordings, right? Every session is recorded. 
Number one, you could attend the session in class or through live meeting. Even if you do miss it, you have the recordings available. Even if you have attended it, still there's a lot of merit to review it, right? If you have forgotten a portion of it, if you want to rehash, because so you can see all the screens, you can hear the instructor, you can hear the questions asked. Uh, make just make sure that even if you are unable to attend a weekend class, you would be able to review the recordings and make up for a missed class. <coughs> These recordings are available for up to one year, right? We have a placement service offering, right? It means all of you are here not just for the quest of knowledge, right? That's one of the things, right? As good as it sounds, right? Everyone is here because of career prospects, right, at the end of the day. So we have a job placement assistance uh, service offering. It's called KPSO, Coach Placement Service Offering, um, where we, we help you with having a marketable resume, having mock interviews so that you know how to present yourself in a technical interview, um, and also finally marketing the candidate, right? And a lot of times, <coughs> Some of the resources, if they're exceptionally good, they get certified. We ourselves, at our client locations, have got certain junior tasks, activities, right, which we feel is a good way for the person to get started, right? Because training is not our main business. Consulting is our main business, right? Training is an avenue with which we can build a good consulting pool. The approach in the training is very school-oriented you will have weekly homeworks, right? Every week you will get a homework, right? Um, you will have weekly in-class quiz. You come to a class, the class starts with a quiz. Questions asked, sometimes oral, sometimes written, sometimes both. So you cannot just walk in. And it's assumed that you have to spend 20 hours outside of the class. So there's an eight-hour class every week. Outside of it, you need to spend 20 hours either doing the homework, preparing for the next class, reading the material, revising what was covered in the class, right? That kind of rigor is required. So as an example, um, if I go, the exercises, right? So every single exercise which we go through, so if I look at day two exercise, right? Structure, day two, starting and stopping an SAP system. How do you do it? What is the screenshot of it, right? Even when we give you an exercise to do, there is enough detail provided to you, right? So you won't be left to yourself, right, trying to figure things out. So you see every day's exercise is there. Um, Similarly, homework. Every day you will get a homework, right? So this is the previous batch, batch 42. Right? So previous batch, day one homework, day two homework, day three homework, day four homework, right? has been continuing, right? So all previous batches have gotten it. And the reason it's not the same homework is because sometimes they change it depending upon what people ask in the class or areas they're struggling with. There's a question. Linux. Not Linux. Linux has joined the conference. Okay. Voice is not clear. Are others feeling the same issue that they cannot hear me well? No, it's fine. All right. So, Jack, might be something on your side. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, I just, still I have problems, so let me reconnect it and see. Even yeah. the phone well, uh, you since you're on the phone, you know, you can look at, do that later on, right? Don't miss anything trying to reconnect your network, okay. right? Yeah. Since you are already on the phone, that should suffice. You can, you know, try to resolve those things with the mole after the class. Okay, uh, so that's, uh, okay, so SAP GUI connectivity, right? So for people who have registered in the class, I'm assuming have already been given instructions on how to download SAP GUI and have downloaded SAP GUI, right, for uh, for their kind of environment, right? Whether you're using, if you're using a Windows XP, Windows 2000, hopefully very few people are doing that. Most of you would be downloading this if you're using Vista, Windows 7, or now Windows 8, right? Um, and if you're in the class, you know, you would be connecting to SD1, which is our SAP system, intranet. You're in the class, you'll be connecting to that. If you are remote, or if you are in our Park Central location in Gurgaon, you'll be connecting through internet. Um, the user ID to log into the system, SD1 system, is user is Shishya, password is welcome. Right. Um, so I would like both of you to kind of connect to the SD1 join the conference. on SAP GUI, and I'll walk you through it. And then people who are remote, um, people who are remote would, would connect through the SAP GUI as well, which they should have downloaded. Um, SAP GUI. Um, so, and this is what, you know, SAP GUI looks like. Um, if you have not registered, you, you know, then you have to just wait because you won't have received the material from a mole. Unless a mole, did you send it to everyone or just the registered candidates? You can respond back. Yes, I have uh, provided a link to download GUI to everyone. So I think... Okay. Uh, Everyone attending class should be able to download it. All right. Okay. So once you download, um, you will see SD1 Internet in there, right? That's the one you will use to connect. If you are in the class, you will use Intranet. Um, and, you know, this is how your SAP GUI logon pad looks like. Double click on SD1, and you will see a logon screen, right? Yeah, hold on for a second. So that's, again, the logon screen you will see. Um, once you are there,
Okay. Uh, so once you're on this screen, the user ID on this screen is going to be Shishya and welcome. Uh, once this screen comes up, I'm just waiting for people in the class so that they're on the screen. Shishya, welcome. Tab. Log you in to your SSP. Um, yes. I'll do the same thing. I'll do. Uh, intranet. SD1 intranet, yes. Shishia. Welcome. Okay. So it's logging me in as well. So this is the main screen of an SAP system. In this case, this is a solution manager system, right? Um, um, they're potentially, uh, you know, we can, I can do a transaction like slash n smo4, which will tell me everyone who's logged in, right? And so I'm just going to do that, and I should be able to see who all are currently logged in, um, actually. Um, I just see so many people are logged in. Um, this is me. This is my terminal code zero is the instructor machine. Shishia 8. This is you. You are not fully. Oh, you are logged in. Shisha eight, and um, right. And this is your machine. Um, okay. So I think those. And then these are other people who are remote. All right. Um, I would have expected more people to be connected. Um, but some of them might not have downloaded SAP GUI. But this kind of proves to you, right, that people who are in the class, people who are remote, can all connect to the system, right, uh, use it. Um, and you will all eventually have your own user IDs, which you will use um, uh, to connect to SAP. So people who are still downloading or are having issues, I'm willing to spend five, ten minutes to kind of uh, your screen is frozen and just showing the SAP logo on window. I think it must be on your side, Patrick. My screen is not frozen. I think others should be able to see my screen. Uh, why is it showing zero zero? This zero zero shows because, and this is for JJ. I think you got two sessions open, right? Yeah, you might have two. One is probably on the logon screen. Yeah. Yeah. If you X out of it, this will go. But it's good, right? See. So now it's gone. So once you're on the logon screen, you're not logged on. That session is still connected to the back end, just that you're not logged on. So at that time, it shows client zero zero zero. 
What is a client is a four-hour discussion, which is to be done later when we start, you know, the real material of the class. Okay, so so every time you see a zero zero uh, is if you have a screen like this, right? You're not logged on, and I'll show this to you. I started another log on session. If I refresh now, uh, actually, I am on a I'm on a different app server, but this is it, zero zero. Code zero. This is me. I, I'm just on a different application server on the same system. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry. So to answer that question, where can you see the user list? The transaction I was in was SM04 and how you do different transactions is forward slash n in this window and then if you type SM04 that's a transaction you all can do it forward slash n SM04 hit enter and you will see the user list right? all of you should be able to do that forward slash n SM04 hit enter so that's how you do a transaction in SAP and there are thousands of these kinds of transactions. Right? And the transaction I'm doing is visible at the bottom end here. SM0, right? Yes. SM, Systems Management 04. 04? Yes. Forward slash N? Yeah, I did that. SM04. Right? As you see up there, forward slash N SM04. Right. You have a typo in there. Forward slash N and as in Nancy, SM04. Yeah, Chetna Amol will assist with that. Uh, it's probably something on your end if a download option is disabled. So Amol, please assist her with that, uh, perhaps after the class. Sure, we'll do that with you. Okay. Um, So that was kind of just to convince you, you know. Um, others are not getting it, uh, but you, you know, I'm not sure of where your SAPGU is installed from. Um, but SMO4 should not typically dump. Again, we can look at that later on. Um, and if you have the version which we provided, then that definitely should not dump because others are not seeing that issue. Okay? Dump meaning giving an error message, right? Um, and what that is, how to look at it, how to rectify it, we can do all of that and we will do all of that as part of this training program. Okay? Um, Systems administration in SAP is called basis administration, right? So wanted to why SAP basis, right? What is SAP basis, right? So NetViewer systems administration 
is the new name for basis administration, right? However, people still tend to use the word basis because it's been out there, right, for a number of close to a decade, decade and a half currently. So systems administration in SAP is called basis administration. NetViewer is the foundation for all SAP products, right? So maybe all is too strong a word. Most of the SAP products um, work on the NetViewer fundamentals, right? And that's why our focus is to teach that. Definition of NetWeaver, right? So as somebody had asked earlier, right, what is SAP NetWeaver? The definition of SAP NetWeaver is what we are going to cover next, and we are going to use one of the study material called SAPTEC, which is in your DVDs. Unit 1, page 16, is what we are going to go to and look at what uh, SAP NetWeaver is. Um, Okay, so let me do that. Training content published. This is the SAP Tech Fundamentals. Has joined the conference. So this is the definition. SAP NetWeaver is a comprehensive technology platform which can be integrated smoothly into existing systems. Right? Because of the minimum amount of expenses of internal company integration, the operating costs of your entire IT landscape are reduced. Right? This is the foundation. Um, and it is also the technical basis of the solution for my SAP business suite. Right? So all of those five products are based upon SAP NetWeaver. SAP NetWeaver, what's inside it looks like what they call as the refrigerator diagram. Right, This is how it looks like. If there's nothing else you remember from today, hopefully you'll remember this diagram. It's very key. Components of SAP NetWeaver. Right, So this is the NetWeaver framework. Right? It has got these building blocks. At the core of it is the application platform. This is the web application server we talked about. Right? It has got a split personality in the sense that it's got two application stacks, a J2EE and an ABAP. ABAP is SAP's proprietary programming language, and J2EE is Java Enterprise Edition. Right? So it's got a J2EE engine, it's got an ABAP engine, and it can run on any database and an operating system, right? Not any, multiple databases and multiple operating systems. So it has a DB and an OS abstraction layer, right, where you can migrate from one database to another database, one operating system to another operating system, right? So you don't need to worry about that. It can run on multiple databases, multiple operating systems. In terms of operating systems, obviously can run on Windows, can run on multiple flavors of Unix. So whether it's AIX, whether it's HP Unix, whether it's Solaris. Um, it can run on multiple flavors of Linux, whether it's uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL, or whether it's SUSE Linux, it can run multiple flavors of Linux as well. Um, 
And then on top of it, on top of the application platform is where you have process integration, PI, which is using integration broker, business process management, uh, different integration technologies to have multiple SAP applications uh, talk to each other. Um, and then we have got um, information integration. Information integration is the business intelligence component of it, right? So it has got a BI engine in it. It's got a master data management engine in it. And it's got a knowledge management engine in it. Right, so it's got um, those multiple engines inherent in it from an information integration standpoint. And then from people integration, that means how do people connect to it? It provides you with multiple capabilities there as well. It provides you with the portal capability, connecting through a portal. It provides you with a collaboration capability within the enterprise portal and provides you with multi-channel multi access. That means connecting through mobile devices, connecting through RF devices. Right, so, and, and there's more details available, right? It talks about mobile infrastructure, multiple channel access, enterprise portal, right, which is enterprise portal, collaboration, knowledge management, business information warehouse, Right, BI capability, master data management, um, vendor master, material master, customer master, exchange infrastructure for exchanging information, enterprise application integration between different SAP uh, different SAP systems or SAP and a non SAP system or two different non SAP systems. Web application server was, right, this is the main engine, right, where we will spend most of our time is in this layer. Okay. So this is SAP NetWeaver, um, the core of what we are going to be spending a lot of our time on. Okay. Zaptec Unit 1, page 13. Then comes SAP's technical architecture, right? How is an SAP system really built, right? What are the various components of it? And this is going to get very technical, right? But the reason we cover it in this class is for you to have a sense of what is included in a course of this nature, right? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time on it. Uh, TADM 10 underscore 1, unit 3. So this is unit three. And there's tons and tons of material, right? Like this one book itself is 500 pages, right? So there's obviously no way we can go through everything line by line, right? So a lot of the reading will be something which you will have to do. I will focus on typically every graphic because typically if there's an image, that means a key concept is being explained some of the verbiage in and around that graphic, and then obviously some of my expert comments in and around that area, and then finally some exercise, which will uh, bring those concepts to life, right? So that's how we are going to progress. Um, Okay, so unit three, it's talking about SAP system kernel, right? So it 
starts with an outline of simple concepts, right? What is the objective, right, about client-server technology, right? SAP is client-server technology, so it starts with those concepts. Then it goes on to naming the processes which make up the SAP NetWeaver application server, right? Processes which make up the NetWeaver application server. Very important. Then it defines the term instance. What does an instance in SAP mean? What does a central instance in SAP mean? Um, then it uh, explains to you about how does application server ABAP work, right? Has left the conference. List of ABAP processes and what they do describes that. Explains certain basic Java terminology. And then explains how does the application server Java work, right? So the, we, remember we said that there is a split personality for two application servers, ABAP and Java. So it's kind of explaining both of them. Um, it explains some of the Java processes and their purpose, right? So it explains that to you. Describes how the requests to application server Java are processed, right? It explains uh, that concept, how the requests uh, coming into AS Java process. It explains the term central services for SAP NetWeaver application server Java. It explains the concepts of Java instance, Java dispatcher, Java server, right? So you see how it builds, right? So this is a key chapter. Um, my goal here is to explain to you at a high level, number one, again, I skipped a couple of pages, why? Because there's more verbiage there I want to focus on. Pictures, right? Because that's where I can explain the concept, right? Client server, what does client server mean? There's a hardware-oriented view of it, right? Which a lot of us are familiar with, saying that anything which is in the back end is server, anything which is in the front end, our laptop, our desktop, our iPads is a client, right? And in the middle, Connecting the client to the server is a network, local area network, wide area network, right? But that's a hardware-oriented viewpoint. Software-oriented viewpoint is different. The software-oriented viewpoint is that any process running could be running wherever. could be running here, could be running here. As long as that process is requesting information, it is requesting for a service, it is a client. As long as we have a process which is provisioning a service or providing data back or providing results back, it is a server. Right. So that's what um, that's the software-oriented viewpoint. And SAP is a client-server system. Uh, what, what we have seen as an evolution recently is um, the world earlier used to be um, two-tiered, right? Where there was only one backend, right? The backend did application logic as well as database logic, right? Everything was bundled together, and then you had the presentation tier, right? This was prevalent in 1990s, right? Then in 2000s, early 2000s, you know, essentially came the world uh, of, you know, um, or maybe late 1990s, three tier, right? Is that you have the client, but let's break the back end, right? Divide and conquer. Let's have the database processes separated from the application server, the business logic, right? Have that segregation. Then came the dot-com era, right? Where we said that, well, put another layer in the middle, right? You have the database backend, you have got the application logic, then you've got the internet in the middle, which is basically web servers and then you've got the browser, 
right? And so this material is a little dated. Obviously, over the last year and a half, two years, this model has further evolved, right? Where the concepts of browser is relegated only to your desktops, right? However, on tablets and smartphones, the concept of apps is coming up, right? So apps don't require browsers, right? They only require web services to run, right? Um, but there's a marketplace from where you can download them and everything, right? So it is actually going back, going back a level in terms of that you have thicker clients, right? An app is a thick client in the sense that something has to be downloaded, right? It cannot just run within a browser. But the act of downloading it is very simple because you don't need to have a DVD, you don't need to have a CD, you don't need to put floppy disks in. You are only going to a URL and you know uh, from a marketplace downloading it, right? So that's that's the newer paradigm. Then comes the concept of what is an instance, right? This the word system and the word instance, uh, people often get confused, right? And it is very important to explain this for you to understand the technical architecture of SAP. So an instance is an administrative unit that combines SAP system components providing one or more services. Right, so different SAP system components in the NetViewer stack which are providing one or more services are combined together and called instance. The services provided by an instance are started or stopped together, right? Uh, any service which is provided by an instance, when you say startup, all of them start up together. When you say shut down, they all shut down together. Um, what needs to be started up, what needs to be shut down is provided in what's called an instance profile. You use a common instance profile to set the parameters for all the components of an instance. Each instance has its own buffer areas. Buffer meaning memory. Right? Each instance has its own buffer area. An instance runs on one physical computer but there can be multiple instances on one computer, right? So an instance runs on one machine, right? Cannot span across multiple machines. But one machine, one physical machine can have multiple instances. A system, an SAP system is identified by a system ID, SID, SID, and a instance number. And an SAP system can have multiple instances in it, right? An SAP system can have multiple instances in it. And here is an example. So this is your PC, right? Actually, this is what most of you are using, right? Today in the class or remote, right? Your laptop or your desktop. You're running SAP GUI on it, and you probably have a browser on it as well. To the ABAP stack, you're going to connect using SAP GUI. To the Java stack, you're going to connect using browser. Um, and in this case, there are how many instances? One, two, three, four instances of SAP running. A central instance, a central services instance. Central instance is for ABAP. Central services instance is for Java and then two other dialogue instances for scalability purposes, right? So that you can have more people log in and your solution can scale. And then you have a backend database instance also, right? This is your database instance. And the whole system, whole SAP system is this. It is spread across four machines and Five instances, right? If we count database as an instance as well, right? So it's spread across four separate physical machines, five instances, making up one SAP system.
and as the mentioned instance always has a two digit numerical number if it's an SAP instance and this one machine has got two instances running but there is no one instance which can run on two machines right so they made that statement and it's evident here right one instance cannot span across two machines but one machine can have two instances running on it then there is a the concept of a central instance the central instance of the SAP system is distinguished by the fact that it offers services that no other instance of the system offers. Right? That means it is offering certain unique capabilities which other instances don't offer. And the central instance runs what's called the message server and the NQ server. message server and the NQ server. What the message server does, what the NQ server does, we'll talk about in a little while, but that's what makes a instance a central instance. For ABA, for Java, central instance is recognized by the fact that it is running the software deployment manager, SDM. Right? If it's running SDM, then it's called the central instance for, or central services instance for Java. All other instances are typically called dialogue instances, right? All other instances are typically called dialogue instances. As, right? That's the statement being made. If the central instance and the database are installed on the same computer, this is referred to as a central system. And in our case, Saraswati, right, which is what you guys connected to, is a central system because Oracle, as well as ABAP engine, as well as the Java engine, they're all running together, right? So if we look at what's happening on Saraswati, right, Saraswati is what we guys connected to, right, remember this was, I connected to SD1 on Saraswati. So it's a backend, it's a Linux machine. How can you know what machine it is? By going to system status. If you go to system status, it will tell you it's a Linux machine. It's a Linux backend operating system. Okay. And it's running Oracle as the database, right? So the platform on which this SAP system is running is Linux operating system, Oracle database. And how many instances of SAP it is running? That you can figure out if you do slash NSM51, new transaction being introduced, right? So if you do slash NSM51, did your SMO4 work finally or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you do slash in, forward slash in, SM51, hit enter, you would see there are two instances, 00 and 02. My transactions are always going to be visible at the bottom here, right? SM51. SM, right here. Oh, SM. Systems Management. Okay. And it shows you two instances. Zero, zero, and zero, two. And the zero, zero is the central instance. Why? Because, remember, we said message server and NQ runs on zero, zero. So zero, 00 is your central instance. And we can look at all of this in the back end as well. And this is where we differentiate our course from everyone else who would be teaching something similar is that you will understand the functionality. Yeah, 
Okay. So we use a software called Putty, right? And using this, I can connect to the back end, right? To the Unix level, right? So I can connect to Saraswati um, through intranet, right? So I, I can connect to Saraswati on port 22 using SSH and open it, right? It's going to open a login session. Uh, you guys just pay attention to it. I'll give you enough time to do this, right? So I just connect using shish, uh, sorry, using SD1 ADM, SID ADM. SD1 ADM is the user ID through which I connect. You have to just pay attention here. Don't have to do it. Saraswati SD1 is the password. S A R S W A T I SD1 is the password, and I connect. So this is the backend Unix. So here is what this system is running on, right? I can see the back end of what it's running on. So first of all, it's running on Oracle. So I can do PS minus EF. These are Linux commands, right? So this is PS minus EF is looking at work processes. Grep, that means find in it, is there any Oracle processes running? Right, so these are all Oracle processes running, right? So for people who are new to Unix or Linux, this is similar to doing task manager and saying that show me the work processes, right? This is the Unix equivalent of that, right? So these these are Oracle. This is the Oracle instance, right? Bmon, process monitor, smon, system monitor, right? Oracle backend running. Similarly, I can do PS minus EF, rep SAP, five more. This is all SAP running. This is the central instance zero zero, right? This is the dialog instance D zero two, right? So I showed you zero zero. I'm showing you D zero two as well. So those are, so I've shown you Oracle running in the back end, DWebMex00, which is a central instance running in the back end, right, the multiple work processes, and D02, dialog instance running in the back end, right. So you've seen the three instances um, running in the back end on the ABAP stack, right. So if I double click on one of these, if I double click on 00, it shows me all the work processes underneath as well. And each line here is a work process, right? So if I look at this line here, this is a work process with a process ID of 11802. This one, if I look at this guy. This is zero zero. This is a work process with a process ID of two two zero one eight, which is what? Which is right here, two two zero one eight. What you see here, two two zero one eight, is right here, two two zero one eight. Right, so I'm comparing. This is a certification question. They'll show you these two screenshots like that. And ask a question based on it, right, which work process it is, right. In this case, it's BGD, which means it's a background work process. What is a background work process, we'll cover soon in the class, right. But the reason I wanted to show this to you is, number one, convince you, right, that you're going to understand the details, right? The details are going to be talked uh, talk to you. What is running in the background, right? What's running at the Unix level? What's running at the Oracle level? What does it mean on the front end, right? So that the fundamentals are clear. 
With that comes the learning, with that comes hearing the interviews and getting a good job, right? Okay. Uh, there's a question remotely. Why we use Linux? It's an operating system, right? Um, you can use Windows as well. We have Windows as well, right? So we have got all kinds of flavors because different clients would be using different technologies, right? So we have got a Windows-based SAP system as well. Um, it is called KD3, this one, right? You guys don't need to log in. But here we have a little server room where all of this is running, right? Um, right, so this is this was running on Saraswati, this is running on Ganesh. Right, Vishnu? In fact we have a server by the name Vishnu as well. <laughs> um, so <coughs> here if I do system status running on Windows, SQL Server, right? And this one is a BW system, it's a NetWeaver 2004 system, it's a BW system. This one is a Solution Manager system. And we have got ten, tens of SAP systems running different, right? Some for a consulting practice, some for training purposes, some people are installing stuff, right? All kinds of things, right? Helps in the learning process. Are central system the same as two tier system? No. Central system just means that on the same physical box, you're running your database as well as your SAP instances, right? But it's still, from a software standpoint, multi-tier. Only from a hardware perspective, it's running on one physical server. Right? In this case, it happens to be Sarsworth. Um, so moving back to the material, Um, here is an example of the ABA processes which run in an SAP system. First of all, there is what's called a message server. Right? So a message server lets multiple SAP instances which make up the same system talk to each other. Right? So a message server can let multiple dispatchers, this DISP, talk to each other. It's the conduit through which different dispatchers talk to each other. Then you have a gateway process, which lets an SAP system talk to another SAP system or a non-SAP system, right? So if an SAP system needs to talk to another SAP system or a non-SAP system, it uses the gateway process. If you need to connect to an SAP system using ICM, Internet Communication Manager, is used, ICM. That's able to connect to a browser session, right? So if you need to connect to SAP using a browser, you connect through ICM, Internet Communication Manager. And ICM is start, it's smart enough Depending upon the port you connect to, it will either pass you on to the Java stack. That's what this is saying, a Java dispatcher. Or the ABAP stack, which is the ABAP dispatcher, right? So based upon what you're asking for, right, it will put you on one of the two stacks, is the Internet Communication Manager. Then comes the actual dispatcher. So if it's an ABAP stack, you have a dispatcher. This is 
same as in a cab dispatcher, right? The responsibility of this work process dispatcher is to make sure that if there is an incoming request, somebody calling 1-800-YELLOW-CAB, right? If there's an incoming request, if it's of the type of dialogue, it will go to the dialogue work process. If it's of the type spool, that means printing request, it will go to the spool work process. Similar to a taxi cab dispatcher, right? Based upon who is calling, where are they calling from, where do they need to go, it will connect you to the nearest cab and dispatch that cab to you. Similarly, this dispatcher does, what do you want to do? If you want to do interactive workload, dialogue work process. If you want to do batch workload, background work process. If you want to get a lock, NQ work process. If you want to update the database, update work process. If you want to print something, spool work process, right? So, <clears throat> and all of these work processes are visible here, right? Dialog work process, update, NQ, background, spool. There are two types of updates, UPD and UP2. UPD is the primary update, UP2 is the secondary update. Okay, A lot of things we are going through today are all going to be repeated, right? I'm going through it relatively fast, but with an intent for you, you to know what level of detail, how are we going to cover it, right? I'm not just going to come in, whatever I want to teach, whenever I want to teach, I'll do that, right? There is a method to the madness. <clears throat> There's a question remotely. Let's look at it. Do we need any Java or any other skills? Yeah. Um, you always need skills, right? This is real world, right? You cannot ask a question I'm graduating to third grade. Do I need to have studied second grade? That was all back in the school, right? In real world, everyone needs to know everything, right? Almost. So, in, yes, any, you know, if, if you know operating system skills, it'll help you. If you know database skills, it'll help you. If you understand Java well, it'll help you. If you know some programming, it's going to help you. Are they necessary? No. Are they recommended? Yes, right? Um, you cannot learn it all in a single day, right? So you need to kind of prioritize, learn something which is going to help you get your job, and then in parallel start, you know, building the jigsaw puzzle, right? What are the bits and pieces if you did learn? Right? And you don't need to attend a training class for everything, right? You will reach a point where you might feel that going through a book or going through an online training might help me equally well. Right, depending upon how you learn. <clears throat> so it's not important, it's not critical to know Java, but it does help. For a basis administrator, however, to be successful, three things are very, very important. <clears throat> understanding databases, understanding operating systems, understanding networks. Because a basis administrator has to use these three technologies to be successful. And if you know those three technologies and you know basis, you will never look backwards. In fact, you will never even look sideways because it's going to be so well rewarding. It's going to be challenging. Every day you go to work, you'll be doing something different. It's like when, when I was learning basis, I was also graduating from my MBA school, right? So... A lot of my friends went on to become investment bankers, so on and so forth, right? I stuck around. I started coach, right? So I still benefited from my MBA, started a business of my own. But eventually, right, I never had to look backwards or even look sideways, right? I was able to kind of build on the same technology. Okay. Um, Moving on, here um, further in this chapter, um, they talk about dialogue work process. What does it do? Dialogue work processes fulfill all requests 
for the execution of a dialog step, right? Interactive workload, right? So when, when you did SM04 transaction, you actually executed a dialog work process, right? A dialog work process worked for you to print out the results of SM04. Spool work process, pass sequential data flows onto printers, right? It helps you in printing. At least one spool work process is required in each SAP system. Update work process is required to update the database. Background work processes run workload in batch mode, right? Unattended, running overnight in the background. NQ work process is used for lock management. How to lock business objects in SAP, right? So SAP locks at a level higher than locking a record at a database level, and hence the NQ work process, right, and its logic. Then comes on the Java side, right? What's happening on the Java side? Um, and just as an example, I'll show you another Linux system, right? Uh, Right, and this we are going to connect through VNC, through a slightly different technology. Um, oops. Right, so this we are connected to the back-end console of a Linux system, right? So this one is called Coach VM Server 1, right? So I have connected to it through a slightly different interface. It's VNC. It's connecting to the console, right? So it's giving me a graphical, <coughs> graphical front end, sorry, a, a graphical tool instead of using Study, right? Um, so here, as I'm connected through root, I can connect to this as a different set SP1 ADM, right? So here I can do PS minus EF grep J launch. I can see all Java processes if I do J launch. So this looks like Java is not running. Looks like SAP is not running for some reason on it. Oracle is running. So I can start SAP. I can just I'll just start it. I don't know why it's not running. Either somebody stopped it or it crashed. Start SAP is the command to start it. So I just gave that command to see if I can start it up. And with that, you know, we will see uh, be able to see the Java processes as well. Not right. There you go.
Okay. So that's SP1. And SP1 is another system, right? And I can connect to that also. It's uh, here. So this is the third system, as, as I told you, you've got a number of systems, right? This is also running on Linux, Oracle, though. And while this is connecting, I can do PS-EF, grep, J launch. This will show me the Java processes, right? So now they're all running, right, the Java processes. So this one here is the Java server node, JVM server. <coughs> this one is the Java software deployment manager, SDM. Right? And this here is the Java dispatcher. Right? So there are three Java J launch processes running, right? This from here to here is one one process listed. And um, if I look at the diagram here, I showed you the Java dispatcher, right, at the OS level. I showed you the Java server process at the OS level. I showed you the software deployment manager. I showed you these three. In addition, there is a central services instance running, which has got a message server and an NQ server for Java. So we can look at those also, right? If I do PS minus CS, grep SCS, system central services, I see both of those. Message server is this, MS, right? NQ server is this. Right? So even those two processes are running. So I've shown you. All of these running in the background, right, on another system, on SP1, which I should have now connected to, here it is, right, so this is SP1, and is this SP1, yeah, this is SP1, and system status, Linux, Coach VM Server 1, right? Oracle 11, a newer version of Oracle. Okay. Um, So coming back to our coming back to our PowerPoint presentation, right? So some SAP transactions, right? And I think we have seen some of these. Um, getting your hands dirty, right? For you to kind of try some of these transactions, right? So we looked at SMO4 and AL08. SMO4 gives you the user list. Right? And AL08 AL08 also gives you the user list, but it is across all the instances, across both 00 and 02. Right? List of all users logged on across both the instances. Right? Um, is what AL08 does for the whole system. Then you got SM51. SM51, as you must have seen, uh, gives you the list of uh, SAP application servers, right? SAP application servers, we showed that to you as well. Slash N SM51. Right? Application servers, different application servers, right? Zero, zero, and zero, two. SM37. SM37, you can look at the background jobs. 
So I can say, show me all the background jobs run by anyone today. And these are all the background jobs, right? Whether they're finished, if some of them failed, it'll show that as well. In this case, most of them succeeded, right? Then you got SM50. SM50 shows you work processes. We have seen this, right? Work processes running in that instance. SM66 shows you running processes, right, which are actively running. So right now I don't see anything actively running, right, even though all of us are... Uh, Um, Adi, question. This is Jag. Yes. Uh, so the running process means it's from the user, from the application? Yes. I mean, different module, right? It could be from any module. Uh, yes. Supply chain. Uh, okay. Yes. could be from anywhere. In fact, all of us are also running processes right now, right? It's just that we're not seeing it because we're not hitting it at the same time. If I were to just take F8, and have F8 pressed, and if everyone was hitting F8, the refresh itself is a work process which we'll see, and sometimes you might see actually, yeah, see now we see one dialog running, right? Yeah, so, we'll so what is the use of this part actually? When it displays the current process, uh, what, is the, what is our part as a basis administrator out here? Just yeah, you need to know what is running in your system, right? What is running in your system? Is it running slower? You know, um, is it in a hung status, right? You need to know what is the system physically doing, right? So very similar to in a Windows system when you say that, oh, you know, system is slow, what is running in the background? Let me go, you know, let me look at, you know, you right-click here and you say task manager. You want to see the process, same thing. Right. So hopefully we will cover it later, right? The kind oh, yeah, of yeah. all of this is going to be covered later, right? This is okay. tip of the iceberg, right? Okay, got it. Um, <clears throat> SM12 is for lock management, right? If there are any locks in the system, right, you will see them in SM12. Right, I can look at any locks held by any user, right? Right now there should be no locks, right? But if I were to actually go and do a transaction, um, if I do slash O, I can start a new session, right? SU01, if I start a new session, if I say I want to change my user ID, um, right, I go into change mode. The moment I go into change mode, I should have gotten a lock, right? See, now there is a lock held. An exclusive mode, locking user Dhingra AA's record. Right. PFCG is for role maintenance, it's for security work. SM fifth SM thirteen is for to manage update records, right? Updates going on through the system. SM twenty one is very important, it's the system log. What is the system doing? Any log messages coming there, right? So SM twenty one. I can look at the system log. So from 11 a.m. onwards, reread system log is showing me any messages, right? So if, if somebody had a uh, dump, right, I can see that dump. Remember this dump was talked about, SM04 somebody was having, right? Patrick was, I'm seeing it here in the system, SM04 dumping for user Shishya. But only for him, perhaps, because others are able to do so. Based on this, I can then figure out what's going on on his machine. SMO2 is a system message. If as a system administrator I need to publish a message, I can use the transaction SMO2 to do that, right? 
I can create a system message. Uh, we have been going for three hours. Not three hours. Two plus hours will end soon, right? So I can put a system message. It went to everyone, right? So anyone who does any dialog step now will see it, right? So if I do a dialog step, SMO4, right? Or something like that, right? You will see this message. Did people see it? If you do any dialog step, you will see it. Anything that uh, looks like. Any, any transaction you do, you will see it. And RZ20 is for monitoring. Monitoring the system. Right? Did you see the message? Yeah. Did you do a dialogue step? Yeah, what, what is it? And dialogue step means anything, right? You just even back arrow out or do the same transaction SMO4, slash in SMO4. It should just uh, put a dialog box. Any transaction you isn't it showing a dialog box? Yeah. Yeah. That's how you publish a system message, right? Okay. Um, okay. I think before we move on, just one more question. Uh, this is Jack. Uh, it could be a basic question, but just to clarify. The window that you are working on, is that a control for basis administrator where you will spend, typically spend uh, the real-time work? Uh, yeah, one of the avenues, right, which is uh, on SAP GUI. That means what I was showing is SAP GUI, but they will also work in the back end. Like I was showing you at the Unix level, at the Windows level, in, within Oracle, within SQL Server, they'll be doing that as well. Okay. Fine. But what is it called? The, the, the window that you are showing is it a console or? No, this is it's a, this 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 window. It's SAP GUI, SAP GUI, yes, SAP is graphical user interface. Uh, that's for everyone, even for the regular user to yes. access some audio. Yes. So an end user, a developer, an administrator, they all use this, right? It's just that they will go to different transactions in it, right? They'll have security to do different things. But an end user also uses it, a developer also uses it, and an administrator also uses it. That's a good question. Okay. Frequently asked questions, right? What do people typically ask us? How are the opportunities in SAP? It's probably the most lucrative and sought after field in IT. Not just that, even within SAP, basis, at least I believe, is the most lucrative, even amongst other disciplines. Right? Most trainees are able to find employment assignments within a short duration of time, right? Short duration could mean three months, could mean six months, right? If they're serious about it, yes. Do you provide any certification? We do provide you a certificate of training, but most important is we train you to get SAP's certification, right? Which is CTADM50 underscore 70, right? Do you help with the placements after the course is done? Yes, right? That's our goal, right? And we have the KPSO program, right? Which helps with, you know, putting the resume together, mock interviews, the marketing process. Do you provide remote access to servers? Yes, 7 by 24 from any place in the world. How do you attend the SAP class remotely? Through live meeting, as most of the people are doing today. In addition, the classes do get recorded, right? So our recording is going on, right? So it's going on for the last 2 hours, 15 minutes, right? And I'm going to save it after that. Right? Um, Patrick has gotten it to work, which is good. This is the SM04 issue he was mentioning. How long after training do I have access to the servers? You have access for three months after the training finishes, access to our servers. 
How can I access the service after the three months? For a nominal fee, you can still access it. Even though we put it this way, we don't charge it, right? My goal is to not penalize you, but to make sure that you do learn and eventually are able to move forward, right? Yes, to access, to continue to access, okay. but we, we waive that mostly. Right. My goal is you have paid enough, you need to use it and get somewhere with it, right? That's the goal. Case study, right? So what have others done, right? So I've just kind of given a case study of a student. Uh, her name was MD, right? Um, the initials. Attended batch 29. <coughs> from April to June of 2010, then she attended the KPSO from October uh, 2010 till Jan 2011. She had some family things, so between June and October she could not attend the KPSO program, right? Um, she got certified in December 2010. She attended, she went through the marketing and the interviewing process from Feb to March 2011, right? So these are all chronologically set up. And then she finally joined Accenture on April 18, 2011, right? So this is this is her. So it's one year, right, from the start of the course till when she started. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we just mentioned, right? It's the coach placement service offering, right? Where oh, we have placement. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Coach placement service offering. In her case, right, number one, she attended all the sessions remotely. So she was actually um, remote throughout, but very focused, asked questions before the start of each class, right? She would have four or five questions every class. Very active in the class, right? Engaged, right? Completed all homework in time, including the installation exercise, which is the most complex. Got certified. 90 plus percent certification marks, right? So, as an example of an individual just like yourself, right? Um, I don't know everyone's background, right? But she wanted to learn, wanted to move on, right? And Accenture is top-notch job, right, to have. This is her certification results, right? I've just, you know, um, blanked it out, but 90 plus percent took it in December. The different areas, right? Um, right? She had 100 percent in most of the areas, except few internet technologies for SAP, system configuration for SAP, which I was very upset with her about that. You know, we actually spent a lot of time on this, and she had only 50 percent. But overall, she had a 90 percent score, right, which is good. Right. How long does this certificate last? Hmm? How long does it last? Certificate never ends. It's just that the versions change, right? So she is certified in that we were 7.0, right? So if a newer release comes now, there is 7.3 is out there, 7.3, right? Yeah. But the value of the certificate is only for your first certificate. Nobody asks that are you certified in every single release. They just ask are you certified, right? Your turn. We'll, you know, I'll give you, um, you know, Five, five odd minutes. Uh, any questions you might have, right? We can try and answer. Um, uh, if there are any, any detailed questions, obviously, you know, Amol is always there to answer those for you as well, right? Uh, hopefully the session was beneficial, right? Um, it's a orientation session to kind of get your appetite going. Um, if you like what you're seeing, uh, we you know, go through a lot of pains to make it beneficial for you. Um, this investment in your future education, in your future training, is has got the highest ROI, right? Return on investment. So, any questions? We can uh, answer them quickly. Um, if not, we'll reconvene same time next week, except eight hours, right? 9:30 to 5:30. Ajay, I have a couple of questions. This is Jag. Yes, sir. Uh, how many can we have uh, actually have offered this one or eight or seven? So how many what? Weekend session. How, how many? many? Yeah, we will have eight sessions. So this session is not counted. Okay, good. And also, um, 
Is there anything we need to do before the next weekend class? Mm, no, you just need to make sure that you have registered and you have gotten the DVD physically in your hand. That's the most yeah. important, right? Because people don't take attention or don't pay attention to that. They don't have the material and then it's a slippery slope from there, right? Because then you are behind, oh, I don't have my PDF files, I was not able to do my homework and blah, 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 right? And then, but in terms of reading and all, uh, not much has to be done except, you know, there is another page, homework. Okay. Right? So, as I told you, I will never let you go without a homework. So, here is your homework, right? So, you have to register at SDN, which is SAP's developer network. It's free. SDN.sap.com. Yes. Uh, you will... You have the recording, right? You can write it down, but you have the recording. You will get this PDF as well, right? Um, keep keep help.sap.com handy, right? That's SAP's public domain information on everything, right? It's their help site. Um, register at SAP Service Marketplace. This you can only do if you're an SAP customer, employee, or a partner. If you're neither of those, then hold off to this. You will do it when you get certified. Ensure SAP GUI connectivity to SD1. So if your connectivity was not working today, make sure you get it working before the next class. If you were not able to download it, download it. If you have questions, email to us. We'll make sure that you know you have those details available. Um, Make sure you have accepted the invite to the Yahoo group and are receiving the Yahoo group emails, right? Without that, all communication from us will get lost. Make sure you review the recordings of today's class. The recordings are going to be posted on Monday. Uh, in this case, I'm all might do it over the weekend as well, but make sure you review the recordings. That will tell you that you can actually review them, that the recording was there, you can benefit from it, right? So homework is always there. Um, where can we review the session? Oh, on um, um, live meeting site. Instructions will be provided by a mole. On the Yahoo group, right? Will you provide us OS access to including VNC for everything? Both VNC and through party. Is the place, yes, KPSO has a separate cost. It's one on one. It is one on one with me, right? Uh, that's $1,000. That's $1,000. Yes, yes. And it's one-on-one -on -one with me, and it's 10 hours. What is the market demand for basis? Very high. Try searching for SAP basis keyword on dice.com. Right? Satisfy yourself. Each person is different, but since you presented about a case study of MD with your students' stats, how many students usually pass the certification and what is the passing grade? I would say, actually it's slightly different, I have to answer it. Not everyone takes the certification. So, you know, a lot of people don't take it. Uh, I would say probably within the six-month period, 40 to 50% do take it. Everyone who takes it passes it, right? But not everyone takes it, right? So that's why I said that I have to answer it slightly differently. And the people who pass the certification invariably are the ones who enter the job market first, right? And now also a lot of our students don't want a new job, right? They're already doing stuff, right? And they're happy with it. Uh, it's just that in the same company now they're implementing SAP and hence they're getting retooled and reskilled, right? 
or they were doing a lower end job in a help desk environment in the SAP marketplace and they want now to do more higher end basis work. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Will you also cover EP Enterprise Portal in your course contents? Uh, Java stack, but not focusing on Enterprise Portal per se, right? Because there's so many products we cannot cover it all. Java stack will be covered. Uh, next weekend, right? Sent via mail. Physical mail. So that's why registration is key, right? It's DVD, right? All right, if no more questions, then I will save the recording.